Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Uh, high above St. Augustine's Catholic Church, actually. My, my office is right next to the church. And we have a guest today who is uh, pretty much a real character, someone who's a great friend of the show and a great friend of mine. He does a lot of our voice here on the radio show and also on our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have a special guest, a uh, special friend of ours. He's the voice of uh, Long Ride Home TV show. He also does a lot of voice work here on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And he's a good friend. And so I want to welcome to the show today, Pat Gervais. Pat, where are you right now? Well, actually, I am also in Waikiki here in uh, the beautiful state of Hawaii. Uh, what can I say? This, pl this place is paradise. It is paradise. I've been reading Dante's uh, Paradise. You know, this, I've been reading the Divine Comedy halfway through Paradise, and he hasn't mentioned Hawaii yet, but I'm sure he'll get to that pretty soon. But he how should. really, really, how, where are you? How far are you away from me right now? I, I'm probably about 30 feet away from you. I'm in the uh, spare room, and you're your condo. You're, yeah, other side of the house. And, you know, it's so cool. Um, very, I've only done a few times where the actual guest is right near where I am. But, yeah, Pat's been here for a few weeks suffering for Jesus in Paradise. You know, Pat, we invite people to come out here for the Deep Deep Adventure Quest retreats. Uh, it's like a man camp, but the men also bring their families. And we have a couple special things for the families. And that's always between December 8th and December 11th. Uh, and so if you missed this one, come next year. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and click on the store. And right in there, there's a place for you to sign up. So uh, t tell them a little bit about what your experience has been so far here in the last few weeks here. Because you came from uh, state yeah. for an extended time. Yeah, I did come to stay for an extended time. It's one of the advantages of being retired from my professional life. I do get to have the opportunity to be able to travel a little bit more, but it has been phenomenal. Uh, recovery from the flight is probably the hardest part, but the water is phenomenal, of course. It's the ocean. The uh, the fish, the aquatic life in there, it, even you know Honolulu Harbor, you think of a harbor, you've got ships, you, you know, there's everything draining out of them. And you look down on the surface of the harbor, it's looking into an aquarium. Not that it's it, it's like looking at an aquarium, it's not really, it's just nature. And then uh, you know, the, you know, the remnants of the volcanic uh, range here, and you know, I, I can turn my head a little bit, and I see Honolulu, but I also see this lush green jungle out there, it's just, mm. What about the what about the Hawaiian people and the Hawaiian culture? What do you what have you uh, experienced uh, in that? I've heard about the aloha, and uh, you know, which means to give breath. But everyone is so. Everyone that I have met that has you know greeted me, when they say aloha, it's said with a heartfelt smile. It it, it truly is radiating love. You know, I got to say, like it is this morning, we had coffee down by the coffee shop next to my condo, Kai Coffee. And this is what happens. Um, I know it happened to you, too. Uh, Hawaii kind of grows on you. And at the table next to us sitting outside, there was a woman with two kids and a husband. And, and uh, it was frenetic energy over there. It was uh, um, uh, iTunes uh, thing for the shows going. The woman is very, very tense and, and talking rapidly and shouting out the latest news on COVID. And you can tell they probably just got here because Hawaii hasn't had her effect on them yet. But what happens is you find out some people walk at mainland speed, or we call it painland, but then gradually they begin to slow down and start walking at Hawaiian speed, because they can't, because people are gonna be walking slow in Hawaii. And so they finally have to just say, are we gonna pass everybody, or are we just gonna uh, enjoy that Hawaiian style? And I know you got a brand new pair, we call slippers, you got some flip flops. Those automatically slow you down a little bit, but how, how has Hawaii grown on you? Uh, it's just tremendous. Uh, the, the amount of exercise I've gotten between uh, going out and golfing on some great golf courses, 
And it, even the worst golf course out here is phenomenal. The view is just mind blowing. And the exercise, the walking that I've been doing right here in Waikiki, everything's walking distance. I think the personal record for any given day for me has been about 11,000 steps before coming out here. I've had a, I had a 16,000 step day since I got out here and didn't feel like I spent all day walking. It just, it yeah, happened. You're, you're getting in better and better shape. What's the, what's the worst? I will just say this for you. The worst thing about Hawaii is uh, it's so annoying. All these rainbows. I know. Uh, since I, I think I see on average one rainbow a year, I've seen three, uh, four, maybe five rainbows. That's all? They, they occur, they occur three, out here. So You mean every day? Almost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you they see a rainbow so at least. so often that people just kind of don't even notice them. They don't react. Yeah, sometimes it's just so stunning. Uh, but we see rainbows every morning uh, during the sunrise and sometimes in the middle of the day and then the evening sunsets are so spectacular. So my wife and I, whenever we see a ra rainbow, we just go, oh, not again. This is getting so old. But it doesn't. And the beautiful trade winds blowing through the through the palm trees. So people, if you want to come out on an adventure, go to deepadventure.com and join us on the 2022 Deep Adventure Quest, December 8th through the 11th. But Pat, uh, how, how did you and I meet? It, it, in a single word, motorcycles. Mm. Uh, I was riding, had ridden with uh, the Patriot Guard Riders, which is a great organization. Uh, you know, if you want more information, go online, look for the Patriot Guard Riders. They've been around almost 20 years. But I was looking for something. But no, but you, but you, when you ride, ride with the these are these are mostly you ride really during funerals for the for our for our um, our military. Yeah, and for, you ride with the family to uh, anyone give them... that's killed in action, or uh, even veterans that have passed. Uh, yeah, from so old you're, age. You're, you give support to the to the families. It's just so beautiful. You're right, right there with them, honoring. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're there at the funerals. We'll hold flags, and uh, I've come up on some of our displays, and it's mind blowing to see how many flags there are. But I was looking for something more Christian, more Catholic. And so I started looking for a Catholic motorcycle group, uh, encountered uh, Eric Wardrum and the Catholic mm, Crossbearers out of uh, Cleveland. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, was, you know, had a few conversations with him, and he shared his interview with uh, you, uh, mm. you know, for your radio show once. And I went, what? This bear guy, he sounds kind of interesting. So I started tuning in, and uh, you were doing the morning catechism, so started watching that and ended up down in Florida. We you know, caught up. We went riding a few times and the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah. I, and by the way, that interview with Eric Wardroom, you can find it on our YouTube channel. It's one of the most powerful interviews I've ever done. He's the founder of Catholic Crossbears Motorcycle. He was in the he was in prison and uh, had a conversion experience there by going to confession with the priest and just a great healing and just beautiful. What is it about the what is it about bikers? There's a certain there's a brotherhood even among uh, you know people are different motorcycle clubs or and uh, uh, may, may not even know know each other. But what 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 do you see? Some of the virtue you see in the in the bright biker community. Uh, well, uh, obviously fortitude. Fortitude is the biggest uh, in the motorcycle world or motorcycling in general. That's the uh, you know, the, the biggest virtue that everyone shares, but there's also loyalty, which is uh, justice, I would think it would fall into. You know, we, we tend to be loyal to our own groups, but we're loyal to each other just by the fact that we ride. Well, it's, yeah. It's, you know, it's a camaraderie, it's a brotherhood, but it's also a, a, res a huge respect. I remember back in the day, surfers, when we were on the way down to the beach, we would give each other the chaka from the people coming up would give the chaka to the people going down to the beach in their cars, or they give them the thumbs up or the thumbs down or the kind of the wave that let them know the surf's up, surf's down, or it's, it's kind of mellow. But now there's, you know, radio, there's uh, all kinds of computerized, you can find out what the surf is like. But there used to be a real brotherhood among surfers where we'd wave at each other when we passed. But it's that's still the same with bikers. Bikers... When you pass a biker on the road, everybody gives each other a, the brotherhood wave, you know? Yep. And each group has a different, you know, like you said, for uh, surfers, it's the chakra. 
the shaka. And uh, with bikers, it's, uh, you know, we usually we reach out with our left hand with two fingers kind of pointed down at the road. Yeah. I mean, uh, and what does that mean? Why it, the left hand? Well, first of all, the right hand's uh, running the throttle. Yeah, the right hand has the so, throttle, and, and the left that, hand faces the, the other bike. And, and why the, the two why, why the two fingers the, down? Why the two fingers two down? Two fingers down is keep two down. You keep, know, the, keep two wheels on the road. Keep the rubber side down, right? Yep. We're talking with Pat Gervais. Uh, he's the voice of a lot of the voice work for our radio show and our TV show, and he's responsible for helping me. He put several hundred hours of volunteer t- uh, time into helping us develop the new Bear School of Manliness. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that when we get back. This is Bear Wozniak. We want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and find out more all about our, uh, our uh, new website. Uh, we also have our bookstore there, our cool, a lot of cool stuff in our, in our, in our web store there. And uh, something there for the men and for the women. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite our mama bears to go to deepadventure.com and become part of the Mama Bears a Mug Club. We're a non that's a, a non Facebook community for the women who are so I don't know, fiercely loyal to uh, our ministry and to their own ohana. They see us as as something that can have a good impact on their families. They pray for us. They financially support us. And so we put a Facebook community. I want to keep saying Facebook. Pat Gervais and I did a lot of work in putting together a non-Facebook community for the the women. As a matter of fact, the reason why, one of the motivational reasons why we did that is our original uh, Mama Bears uh, Mug Club on Facebook was shut down by Facebook. So that's why we have our own Facebook community now. And, and my guest, Pat Gervais, uh, who's a good friend of mine, is also uh, was one of the, he and I worked together to put that up for the women. So go to deepadventure.com, women, and join uh, the Mama Bears uh, Mug Club. Pat Gervais, uh, you, were, you were discussing about how we got to know each other. You threw, uh, threw the radio show, and then we rode together. But I remember in particular uh, a moment in Cleveland, Ohio, do you remember what we were doing there and what was going on? Yeah, you were doing some shooting for uh, the long ride home. I was meeting with the uh, the international meeting, the annual international meeting of the Catholic Crossbearers Motorcycle Ministry. 
uh, as I'm a member of the Knights on Bikes, and we are a brotherhood club with uh, the Crossbearers. But, uh, you know, the Crossbearers are special to me because they invite me to their national meetings every year. Uh, they open it up to, you know, poor me to come, which is, if you know anything about the motorcycle community, for one club to invite it, some, a member from another club to come in and attend their uh, meetings, it's it's a big deal. So I was up there and, you know, just spending time with them. It's great to get together with other Catholics and share a passion, which we all have for motorcycling, along with our passion for Christ. But I was up there, you know, visiting with them and they, every uh, evening they had, one of their members used to lead a rosary down in the lobby of the hotel that we stayed in. Well, you know, since I was doing the rosary online, you know, I took and asked, hey, do you mind if I do it? And they said, no, sure, no problem. So I started, you know, for a couple of years, every evening I would lead the rosary. And I was leading the rosary when you showed up. Yeah, you know, it's so cool. Um, you're talking about becoming a part of the Catholic, being able to participate with the Catholic Crossbearers Motorcycle Ministry, even though you're a member of the Knights on Bikes, which is national president, um, is is a member of our man cave and uh, uh, Ace Bagley, and there's about four or five thousand members of the of the Knights on Bikes now. The Knights of Columbus, un, under the Knights of Columbus banner, but here in Hawaii, when you go to the to the dealership here in Hawaii to buy a motorcycle, you'll see up on the walls, all around the walls, the the banners of each of the local motorcycle clubs, which is really unusual, um, very unusual. I've never seen it before, but it's just basically. Uh, this this love for each other among the different biker uh, clubs and uh, watching out for each other and sharing ohana we know that there's uh, a, a great love within their the brotherhood within their club but also that we sharing it with others but i just remember pat that that particular day was probably one of the most hellacious days i've ever had uh i've had hard days i guess but it was up there in the top 10 uh we had been riding in washington dc and that's when everything started the you could just feel the demonic attack and then the next day uh we'd have we'd have moments of relief like an oasis like almost running from one bunker to another we rode into steubenville you know franciscan university of steubenville had a beautiful time there and walked out into into even more just a hard 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 just a demonic attack and um and people say are, are you under you ever experienced that you're under spiritual attack when you're out on the road filming and I go no we're on the attack and sometimes we just face some resistance because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church but gates don't attack people right we attack the gates exactly. but that day I remember walking in after a long ride motorcycle problems every kind of thing that could be, go wrong it was just it was just a, a horrible hard difficult difficult day and I remember being exhausted and carrying my uh, motorcycle bag uh, on my shoulder walking into the lobby of frankly not the nicest hotel in Cleveland I'm sure and we walked in and I was just beat up and there was a bunch of people uh, sitting in the lobby to my right and I thought I don't have the energy to speak to anybody and uh, I looked over and there was Pat praying the rosary and I was thinking thank God the Catholic Motorcycle Ministry is praying the rosary with Pat and everything's going to be okay but I remember going upstairs and then nothing then it wasn't okay because that night the fire alarm, which is the loudest fire alarm I've ever heard in my life, kept going off about every 20 minutes, and it would last for about 30 minutes, and then it would go off for 20 minutes and go on again. None of us had sleep. My uh, my uh, film crew mutinied. <laughs> they just couldn't, you know, they just couldn't, just couldn't rally. And frankly, I was pretty beat up too. We were all beat up. Um, it was asking a lot of my crew to go out and film. We were supposed to ride with you guys and film that whole day. But you know what? The bikers got up. They rode. They, they rode. They had a seven or eight hour ride that day. They did a nice full circle. And, uh, and I was just, that, that's, that's what you talked about, the virtue of fortitude, that you just keep on going, right? Yeah, yeah that is. And it's like, uh, you know, if you get caught in the rain, you know, you've really got three choices. You can either stop, tuck your tail between your legs and go home. You can hide somewhere and hope it passes by. Or what most of us do is just you know, drop a gear and hit the throttle. Just keep riding. Yeah, it's but only it also, wet. But also, it's, it's a great example of prudence uh, and fortitude, how they go together. 
You know, because God in, in your spiritual life, if you're a Christian, you're you're going to be called to do bold things. You know, you're not supposed to be. Prudence isn't sitting on the couch and getting all comfortable. Prudence is only needed when you're going to do something bold. And yep. so, there's a certain way that the pack rides together. You're, you've, you've you've checked out your bike to make sure it's safe. And there are times when you have to when you have to. Uh, I remember the first time I rode with my wife Cindy, we had to pull over, and I wouldn't call it a rainfall; it was like a waterfall. Found ourselves at a, in a chocolate factory, <laughs> so that wasn't all bad. But yeah, the combination of prudence and fortitude. But you know, then then we did that ride up to uh, we we where, where did where did we all well, we went up to uh, Michigan? We met up with the Knights on Bikes. Tell them where we rode that first day. I know you had a bike. There was a collision, but tell them, tell them about that, but tell them where we were going. Yeah, I didn't make it all the way, but uh, the rest of the uh, Knights on Bikes and others were on their way to hell. Yeah, we were on our way to hell. It, it, there is a place that is uh, called Hell, Michigan, and they they have lots of fun with uh, with the name of the community. Uh, I used to live in northern, uh, northern Indiana, which is only like three or four hours away from hell, and we'd get reports that... Uh, Oh yeah, the storm was real bad last night. Hell froze over. <laughs> well, what I like about it, we rode to hell and back. And yep. I think a lot of people in life, they they feel like they've been to hell. They've been through the worst of times. Maybe right now you are. Um, but it's when you come to the end of yourself, when you've really gone through hell, uh, when you really learn to just let go and say, "God, I can't do this. You got to help me." It's 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 like that moment of total um, total exhaustion weariness confusion uh it's at that moment when you just drop your guard and say okay god you win i know when jacob was wrestling with god out in the desert you know the angel of the lord the pre-incarnate christ he fought and fought and fought with 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 god through the night and then finally he just closed distance and grabbed onto him and he said i won't i won't let go until you bless me and that's the nature of, like when you're when you watch a, a prize fight the the boxer that's losing will go close distance and grab on to the other his opponent because then the punches don't hurt so bad and it's kind of like men in your life right now if you're in that place where you feel you're like at the bitter end you're at the bottom um close distance with god drop your defenses drop your agendas you don't you know you can't hang on to someone else and hang on to your your backpack that's weighted down with guilt and selfishness and pride you just got to let go of everything and just cling and hold on to jesus and what, what the angel of the Lord did with Jacob at that moment is he punched him in the hip. So basically from that moment on, Jacob was given a new name, Israel. When you drop everything and cling to God, he'll give you a new name, he'll give you a new life. Uh, and he, but he might punch you in the hip. In other words, you might walk with a limp a little bit. In other words, you might, before you take your next step, you might hesitate and ask God, is this your will, Lord? Is this your will, Lord? So we're talking with Pat Gervais, who's a good friend. And we will be talking more about how we, how we got to know each other. And we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Dan LeBoon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Coffee, Joe, Jabba, Dirt, Brew. There's few things in the morning better than smelling freshly brewed coffee. And yet, bacon does run a close second. It was cowboys of the Old West that first called coffee Arbuckles. That's right, Arbuckles, like pour me a cup of Arbuckles. A short spell after the Civil War, two brothers, John and Charles Arbuckle, had a novel idea in preparing coffee for market. Instead of sending green beans and sacks to general stores across the West, those wily boys decided to roast the coffee beans first and then send them off, all packaged up and pretty-like. Up until then, cowpokes had to roast the green beans on a skillet and then boil them in a pot over an open fire. One burnt bean ruined the whole pot. Arbuckle's Arosia blend became so popular that cowpokes only knew coffee as Arbuckles. The Arbuckle boys supplied something not provided afore. Consistency. Each brewed pot tasted the same, and that would be good whether brewed in Oklahoma, Arizona, or California. A lot to be said for early mornings in consistency, like time with our Lord. Always start my day with coffee while reading the morning news to wake my brain up. Once the brain is up and running, then it's my morning devotional followed by reading the word. By doing the same, you'll be in good company. King David wrote, O oh God, you are my God, early will I seek you. We read of Jesus in the early morning Jesus left the house 
and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. More coffee, please. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our, my co-adventure guy today is Pat Gervais. He's actually out here with me in Waikiki Beach. And uh, after we get done doing this, this, this uh, talk story together, we're going to go get on a sailing catamaran and take a sail out, out in front of Waikiki with a friend of mine, Jay, who lives here in the same building as I do. And, uh, and check out how beautiful the island is when you look at the island from the ocean. So, Pat, we met, we met up and we, we did that ride in Michigan. And uh, we were filming part of Long Ride Home there. But then there came a time, Pat, when, <clears throat> when frankly, I haven't talked about it. I don't know. Maybe I've talked about it briefly once or maybe mentioned it. But I, I had to go through a real difficult time with prostate cancer. I had to uh, either have my cancer removed or go through radiation. And I remember you'd say, whatever I can do to help, let me know. And, you know, people say that all the time. So you just kind of take it for granted that, yeah, ca call, me, call me sometime, which means never. But you were very insistent, and I remember going to those radiation treatments afterwards. Uh, I could hardly make it back home <laughs> without having to make an emergency stop someplace, and and it just really beat me up. I didn't realize how badly it had beat me up until now that I'm stronger and healthier, and I look back at what those treatments were. But you were the one that would pick me up many times, take me there, bring me back. Uh, I don't know how many times you, you, you helped me and always sparing my dignity because when you're going through that, you don't feel very dignified. And you uh, showed yourself to be a true friend that was there in time of need. Oh, thank you. you know, it's, just, it, it's just my mindset. So the, the way I was raised, uh, you know, possibly coming from the biker community also, it's uh, yeah, you don't offer something you aren't willing to give. And if you do offer it and someone takes you up on it, you you do it. I mean, you, that's j just the way I am. It's, you know, if I take and say, so, you know, tell, it's easy for me to say, if I tell someone, you know, Hey, I'll be there at such and such a time, you know, or, you know, if you need anything, let me know. I, I don't do that casually. I, you know, when I say that it's, it's coming from the heart and it's meant and it's followed through on. Yeah. Amen. And that, and that, that type of a friend is who Jesus is. You know, the Holy Spirit is our friend. Jesus is our friend. We're invited. Jesus said, I won't call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what the master is about, what the master is doing. I will call you friends. And so we as Christians, men, you don't have to be so tough all the time, but we sure don't need enough not any more nice guys. We need some good men who are able to be open and say, hey, look, I, I, I have a problem. I need help or I've, I I." You know, pray for my family, pray for me in this situation. That's why we have the Man Cave Brotherhood. You can join it at deepadventure.com. But uh, you can become friends with God. What a phenomenal, phenomenal statement to make. We know he, we're his kids. You know, when we give our lives to we know we're his kids. But some kids never really become friends with their parents. You know, like, I mean, you're always going to be a mother or a father. But there's a point like you, you can see me when, when each of my sons, we have a special relationship, even in, even in a unique, different way. But um, to be able to say to the Lord, I want to be your friend, to be able to say to the Holy Spirit, I want to be your friend. And then to just walk and talk with him through the day, you know, like, um, Lord, what shirt should I wear today? You know, what 
what where should I stop for gasoline for my car? You know, um, just to have a day to day, a normal, casual relationship and get comfortable that Jesus walks alongside you. He doesn't come along. The Holy Spirit doesn't come along to condemn you. He comes along to convict you of your sin. But then to say, hey, let me help you with that. You're having a trouble getting over this sin or having a trouble with that. You've gotten yourself in, into some debt because of some foolishness. Uh, I'm not going to just get rid of that for you, but I'm going to show you how to walk through it, and you can grow in virtue, and I'll come alongside and help you. You know what I mean? How do you, how do you see yourself uh, in the friendship of Jesus in your life? Uh, not as close as I am with you, unfortunately. I you know, feel like I really do need to. That, and I think everyone feels this way that regardless how close you are, you, there's always a, long, a lot further that you can go mm. to improve your relationship. Uh, one of the things that I uh, did, especially out here, as I said, you know, it's everything's walking distance and the weather is just perfect. So I've done a lot of walking and I could really sense the Holy Spirit literally walking along with me. Mm-hmm. I sensed Mary walking with me. Amen. That's exactly and, right. And, and yeah, you know, but I mean, physically, well, not that I could sense someone there, but, you know, spiritually, I knew that. She was walking along with me. She was seeing the beautiful sight. She was smiling at everything. Mm. And she was helping me to see some of the beauty Amen. of everything. Yeah, you know, when we were, and, and it, it can be small things or big things, but if you can't ask the Lord, people say, well, I can't ask the Lord to do a small thing for me because he's too busy. Yeah, right. God's all powerful, almighty, omniscient. Um, you know, you can ask him for the small things. But if you don't learn how to ask him for the small things, you're not going to ask him for the big things. And I remember, Pat, uh, We've been waiting for the whales to come back here to Hawaii. They come back every winter around the 1st of December. And it was about the 14th or 15th of December, and we hadn't seen the whales here yet in Waikiki from our condo. And so we just said, Lord, please uh, please bring our whales back to Waikiki uh, because they calve around the bend over here at Makapu'u area. And then the, they'll bring the little calf in uh, with a few of the bigger whales will come in. And, and uh, lately, this is something they've started, the behavior they've started in the last seven Years where they'll just come around into Waikiki and not go much further than where we can see from our house. And we said, Lord, please bring the whales. Can bring the whales here tomorrow. And the next day, what happened? The whales the whale showed up. Two whales and a baby whale. And so that, that was a little thing, or maybe it was a big thing. But another kind of humorous thing is we were golfing the other day, and I said, let's ask the Lord that we can both get a birdie or a par. And your statement was, you of little faith said, oh, that jinxes it. <laughs> and I said, no, let's pray. And, I, and we prayed. And I think you got the second par of your life, yep. and I got a birdie because God like, lo- loves me better. But Oh, of course. Can't, believe, can't believe I said that. But no, I mean, if, if you can't ask the Lord, what shirt should I wear today? Or, Lord, will you help me get a parking spot? Because the Bible does say he goes before you to make a way. Then you really don't understand the, uh, the friendship of Jesus and the friendship of the Holy Spirit and how the little things, when you ask him, it gives him pleasure. You know, so t- t- so I asked you a favor. I asked you to come alongside me, and I said, "Will you help me build this new website, the Bear School of Manliness website? It's deepadventure.com gets you there. Can you describe a little bit about the adventure of building that site and why we built it?" Oh, that was uh, that was such a you know a rush doing it. Uh, a little background. That was my kuleana, I think the is the term that uh, you use. That was my responsibility when I. Uh, was in corporate America is I worked in IT. So all of this stuff I hadn't used for a few years, you know, started doing it, it came rushing back and it was just, it, it was so great to be able to do it. But the other thing was that uh, in doing it, we, you know, we encountered problems, but as a team, we were able to work together, all three of us, you, me, the Holy Spirit, and uh, we're able to figure out what the problem was, resolve it, and keep moving on. But we'd get together probably for anywhere from half an hour to three or four hours on a conference call, me in Florida, you in Hawaii, and just basically talking it through, pointing, clicking, building it almost on the fly. I mean, we did have a design in mind, but a lot of it grew organically it's one of those hey what happens when you click on this hey this is cool let's do that and yeah so the holy spirit was there with us and you yeah. know i have i have this great love for for cowboys my wife is a rodeo girl she was a barrel racer and i had a cabin up in montana and 
I just remember as a kid, of course, every kid, you know, still loves cowboys, I think. And uh, but I like the cowboy virtue. You know, I, my first editor, Lou Aronica, was Louis L'Amour's last editor, who is the great Western writer. In fact, I have all of Louis L'Amour's Westerns. In fact, the name of the show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, I didn't realize was named after a, a Louis L'Amour book until I was moving some books around. And, the, and this book fell out of that that box that I was moving to my bookshelf. And it said Long Ride Home by Louis L'Amour. So I love Louis L'Amour. And w- one of the reasons I like him, I was talking with Father Bryce Lundgren, the cowboy priest in Wyoming. And uh he was talking about how his brother loves Louis L'Amour Westerns, too, because of the cowboy virtue. You know, they ride for the brand. They don't pick a fight, but they won't back down from a fight. They're clever, but not conniving. They live by a creed. Uh, they have fortitude. Uh, they're often very wise in these books. They're, they're wise uh, with their money. They may not have any, but they're careful with it, or they might invest in it a little bit secretly, or maybe they're saving for a ranch. Each of the cowboys would carry a, a Bible or I think it's Blackthorn's book on the law or a Plato or Aristotle. So they were learned. But the one thing they all ha- had in common is they stood between a danger and the vulnerable. And I like what Father Bryce told me, and it's also true, that all of, all of the cowboys, before they would meet a woman, there's always a woman involved in their books. Um, it, it may not be a love interest, it may be, but, but there's always a woman that the man is involved with and protecting. Not that she isn't a strong woman, but sometimes you're in a position you need a, a, man, uh, a man to come alongside. And they're celibate. You know, even uh, his brother's favorite character, or his favorite character, I think, is, is Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke because he was celibate. He, he protected Miss Kitty, but his celibacy allowed him to, him to run free. If he needed to go chase someone down for a month or so, he could do that because he didn't have those other responsibilities. And to him, it reminded him of his priesthood. And so our whole website is based on the cowboy theme, the Bear School of Manliness website that Patrick Vey and I uh, put together together, and you can find it at deepadventure.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. I remember surfing on Waimea and hearing the sounds of helicopters. And usually what that meant is someone was in trouble somewhere and the helicopters were coming to the rescue. And right now standing here, four or five Coast Guard type helicopters flew from Oahu heading towards the Big Island. The Big Island in the last few days has been experiencing eruptions that we haven't seen since the 50s. Suddenly the earth is shaking beneath the homes of the people. The earth is opening up and lava is spewing forth, fountains of lava and ash. We've had fog here in the last week or two where the ash from the volcano comes all the way over to the island of Oahu and it kind of affects our breathing and our ability to see. The earth is trembling, the earth is shaking on the big island, tremors, uh, many of them every minute. We look around us and we think that our life is just solid. We look at concrete and we think it's concrete. We think it's solid. We look at our our job or we look at our family or we look at our our country. We look at our lives and everything just seems so solid. The greatest emperors in the world thought they were on top of the world and everything was so safe and so solid. The fact is, though, that there's everything is moving ground. Everything is shaking ground except for the rock that doesn't roll, the rock that doesn't move, the rock that is the cornerstone uh, of the church, and that rock is the rock of Jesus Christ. I've been to the tomb of Jesus. I've actually been able to go in a little bit into the tomb of Jesus. This is the rock that's unmovable. When Jesus came to earth, when God became man, and stood in solidarity with mankind. He laid down a fortress that we can run to, that we can stand on, and we know that it's firm. Don't trust in the shaking of the earth around you. Trust in the unshakable power and faithfulness of God. This is Bear Wozniak, The Deep Adventure Moment. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, 
you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears or the man cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Pat Gervais, my good friend. Uh, he's really laid down his life in, in servant leadership in our, in our ministry. He is the one who has Kuleana for Bear's Man Cave, where Bear's Man Cave is a place where the men can come and join a non-Facebook community. We had to do that because we didn't want to uh, deal with the limitations of being kicked off Facebook. We have a beautiful non-Facebook Man Cave community. And he welcomes you when you join. He, he does a little uh, short story, talk story with you on Zoom. He introduces you to the other men and helps you get dialed into the man cave and then, and then participate in Bear School of Manliness. Pat, can you tell them uh, what the man cave is and then, more, and then lead into what, what we have going on in the three-year cycle curriculum, Bear School of Manliness? Well, like you said, the, uh, the man cave is a non-Facebook community. Um, primary reason is in this whole cancel culture that we're living in right now, uh, a lot of things have been either blocked or you know, tagged as fake news. And just recently they've, uh, in court hearings, you know, you know, Zuckerberg has admitted, oh yeah, the uh, fact checkers are just offering their opinion on it. But it's, uh, this is an area where, uh, yeah, to use the cowboy analogy, the cow, the, the cattle can run wild. They can, uh, you know, we got a free range pasture out there that everyone can uh, go through and express comfortably without censorship their, uh, you know, Christian feelings and concerns and the like. Uh, it's also, uh, you know, the school of manliness is phenomenal. It's a, it's broken out as you mentioned in three years. The first year is focused on is 12 monthly sessions on the individual virtues, including faith, hope, charity, fortitude, justice. And I always forget the last two. <laughs> justice, fortitude, prudence, uh, self-mastery, faith, hope, and love. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we have that, you know, we have those, you know, we we have the we have them all set up. We have them all set up so that people can. Uh, uh, well, the way it works is is this man cave. I think Pat uh, maybe misstated or understated the power of it because the men come. You have to be a member uh, to to jo you have to join, and uh, it's not open to everybody. But most men who want to join, we allow them to join. But um, it's it's a place where we're like all bozos on the same bus. You know, we're all. Just we're, we're trying to go deeper with the Lord. We're trying to learn how to live a life of servant leadership for our families and our communities. But when you've hit a, hit a rough spot, there's other men there that have been through the same thing. And we, uh, you're, 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 you've suddenly realized that you don't have to hide yourself or be ashamed of, of things in your life. You can go into a community of men that have all been there to some degree or another. And we help each other. People will write and say, hey, I've really had a problem with pornography. How do I, how did you, how did you, um, conquer that or I've had a problem uh, of, of um, I have a, a child that I, I that I that is acting out what do I do or my hey uh, my wife is sick can you pray for her and so part of that ministry is 
Pat has the daily Catholic Biker Rosary the week on week weeknights, the Catholic Biker Rosary. That's part of our ministry that you can join and pray in. But there's also the man cave where you can actually get to know other men. And we every two weeks, what do we do? Yeah, we get together for a Zoom meeting. And, you know, it's face to face. We're talking about, you know, the virtue of the month and helping each other, one, understand the virtue and how it you know plays out in our day to day life. But also, uh, we've had Zoom meetings where someone has come in and said, you know, hey, guys, before we get started, you know, I'm having problems with X, Y, Z. And I, one in particular comes to mind. We spent almost the whole Zoom meeting just focused on his issue and helping him, you know, deal with it, offering suggestions, uh, connecting each other, you know, connecting some of the men with someone else that has a similar uh, issue or has dealt with that. And they've actually gone offline and worked together on uh, doing things. So it's really a great place where it's full confidence. You know, everything and anything that's said in there is said in full confidence. And it's not, you know, you know I don't like to use the term, you know, steal it from Vegas, but what happens in the man cave stays in the man cave where, uh, you know, we don't, you know, bring things out. It can't be seen by anyone other than it's not recorded or anything. Of- yeah, and it's not recorded. Right. But and you know, so the man cave is a place for us to open up and 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 we we do have our hold my hold my beer moments too that people oh, yeah. share. It should be fun. It's and just because you know people used. To, I know I was part of a men's uh, group once, and if and if you were having a happy time and you came to the men group, men's group, they made sure that you had a problem you had to work on before you left. That's not what this is about, and it's not about accountability. It's a kind of a word I frankly don't like too much. It's about brothers loving each other and encouraging each other and challenging each other. And you should leave that meeting feeling empowered and ready for, for anything. And, and then and harassing each other too. Yeah. Yeah. You're really good at harassing me, but then, but then there's this positive thing you can do. The, the bear school of manliness, we have it set up for monthly curriculum and there's about 13 lessons in each month, maybe a dozen, sometimes there's seven or eight, but each lesson, as you do them, you click it, you click it, you click it. So you make a progression through right now. We have about 60 lessons for, for, um, uh, I mean, yeah, something like 60 lessons, uh, uh, set up in, in that school in that school of manliness and you can watch your progress as you go and the cool thing is you can sign up for your whole family there's a special family rate where each each uh, child probably of 13 years or older can uh, can uh, uh, value get value from this and you can lead your family through the school of manliness uh, your sons to the school of manliness and they can they uh, they click off the lessons as they go, so you know if they're following that curriculum. Once a week, you can you can follow what we do, and you can you can do this with your family. We don't let the younger people join the man cave. You have to be at least eighteen years old to, to join the man cave. But um, but it's a great place for men to take and lead their families and uh, draw them in a in a real deep and positive conversation about the virtues. You know, um, remember Elijah fought fought the priests and prophets in Baal, and then he had a big depression after he won this great victory. And he said, oh, God, it's only me. I'm the only one left who loves you. And God says, no, Obadiah's got 100 men hidden in a cave. And that, that was called the, the, the school of the prophets. So the school of manliness, a place where men form each other and where God forms the men. Yeah. And it's a, it's a great place. I mean, I, I don't know how many friends I've made going through the man cave over the years. Uh, I don't even remember how many years that it's uh, it's been. Yeah, before, long before yeah, long before Zo- long before Zoom became popular, we were doing Zoom, right? Yeah, yeah, we were Zooming before people even knew how to spell Zoom. <laughs> but we encourage people to go to what? Where, where do they go to join, and how do they join? Go to deepadventure.com. There's a uh, a couple of links there. At the, the top of the page, it's you know it has a. Uh, brief description of the school of manliness in the man cave and a button you click that says tell me more it'll lay out all the differences also for you uh, mama bears for you ladies if you're uh you know if you scroll down on that same page i believe you know underneath where it talks about the man cave there's the uh the mama bears section and you can click on that and that you know tells you even more about you know what's what there is for you know the women you know yeah, the yeah, we Mama went, Bears Mug Club. What's what's that yeah. all about? 
you know, the Mama Bear Smug Club is much the, much the same as the uh, Man Cave. And as you alluded to earlier, the uh, lady that was doing it when we were up on Facebook actually got shut down several times. So it's good we're no Facebook longer. Yeah, we have our own content. Community. So we're, you know, Facebook, oh, yeah. yeah. See you later, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, you are, you know, but you don't get know, our business. Yeah. But, you know, the thing about the man cave, too, is I remember God gave me a, 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 an image in my mind when I first started in ministry of a guy in a black pickup truck. And he was spinning his wheel, c- wheels because he had no weightiness of purpose in the bed of that truck. Uh, he didn't have one of those big toolboxes. So in the man cave, we also provide a big toolbox. In fact, it's all cowboy images. And this is a cowboy reaching from his saddle on his horse into the toolbox to get a tool out. And in there we have um, we have things like the the. the the liturgy of the hour, the catechism, the readings from mass. We have a ability for you to take a, a survey of where you are in terms of that month's lesson, as far as uh, how do you measure up and where can you improve. We have we have you we give you the ability to set what we call smart goals and how to how to develop and grow in each area. So, and we also have a playlist that you can play in the car because the Kajabi because the app is on your iPhone and your iPad. It's like a regular you get it from the app store too. And uh, you, you, you play the playlist of country western music. So how good is that? You guys, we got to go. We're talking with uh, Pat Gervais. He's the voice of, uh, of our TV show, our radio show. He's the Catholic biker. And you can, in our toolbox, we have his nightly rosaries there so you can watch it live. Uh, and so uh, Pat uh, has Kuliana for the entire Man Cave, too, to welcome guests and new members and make them feel welcome. Pat, thanks for joining us. Anytime, Bear. Anytime. It's been a pleasure coming in to visit with you. And I hope everyone goes up to deepadventure.com and uh, checks out the Man Cave and the School of Manliness. Okay, and we got to roll the Mama, because the Mama Bear's Mug Club. Yeah, and we got to roll because we're supposed to get on a catamaran and go sail today with our friend Jay. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.